Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You, or as it this week comes out in anagram form, courtesy of Tim Hopkins of Luton, you heaving woofters. <laughs> the, uh, the merest thanks to him and any further suggestions will be gratefully shredded. Uh, in the news this week, there are concerns that Yasser Arafat's long absence from his wife may be having an adverse effect. <laughs> In an effort to improve the chances of British tennis players at Wimbledon, the All England Club introduces a new handicap for foreigners. <laughs> and as the England cricket team sets off to face the West Indies' fierce and fast bowling, essential supplies are loaded at Heathrow Airport. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's side, a woman perhaps best known as one half of the slobs from Harry Enfield's show, who said recently, the more disgusting the characters, the more I like them, which is why we put her on Ian's side, <laughs> Kathy Burke. <laughs> Lord Lawson has sadly been called away at the last minute, so with Paul Merton this week, kindly standing in, is a man who was uh, one of the first guests ever on this programme. Sorry, one of the worst guests ever on this programme. <laughs> journalist and broadcaster Martin Young. So let's rummage in the briefs of round one, two bite-sized chunks of news footage per team, Ian and Cathy. Who's telling tales here? Got to be Northern Ireland, I presume. Mm. Now there's a, a man about to become a respected statesman. <laughs> there's a man who wasn't lying. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a bad week for um, the government who had repeatedly said that um, they weren't talking to the IRA. John Major had actually said at one point that um, his stomach turned at the thought of talking to terrorists. So his stomach's done a U-turn now. <laughs> it is rather good having Jerry Adams saying, do you know the government were telling lies? <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Adams? They'll be blowing people up next, won't they? <laughs> uh, yes, it is the, uh, the government's admission that they've been uh, telling lies about their contacts with the IRA. Also, Secretary Sir Patrick Mayhew has been at the centre of the controversy for a few weeks. We've always made it perfectly clear we will not enter into any discourse with representatives of Sinn Féin, he told Mr. Gerry Adams just before their meeting. <laughs> uh, for his part, Gerry Adams said... <laughs> uh, Paul and Martin, a uh, familiar brief for you. Oh, it's uh, Kenneth Clark. Needs a new briefcase for his Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the one? Yeah, I think so. Look. <laughs> There's a tribute to the Wright brothers. Um, <laughs> just heard that John Major wants to see him. Um, the budget. Well spotted. Mm. <laughs> Anything more about it? No. <laughs> it was a brilliant trick, wasn't it? A Tory Prime Minister comes out and says, oh, by the way, we're increasing taxes and um, we're increasing spending on the welfare state. And all the Tories go, hurrah, hurrah! <laughs> That's what Labour promised in the last election. Mm -hmm. Good trick. Yes. And, uh, and a touch of satire, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> <laughs> Not too um, much, Angus. No, we'll be, uh, we'll be back onto the willy jokes in a moment. <laughs> um, the, uh, the Chancellor, sipping as is traditional from a large tumbler of whiskey and water, began by announcing a freeze on income tax and finished with a raise in the threshold of corporation tax. <laughs> The uh, government will receive an additional £2 billion from the contentious imposition of VAT on fuel, which by happy coincidence can now go straight to the NHS for all those extra cases of hypothermia. <laughs> the, uh, the whole budget is based on the Chancellor's ability to undershoot the original spending programme, firstly by an accountancy adjustment and secondly a strategic cut in the contingency reserve. Anyone who's the faintest idea what I'm talking about should seek medical help. <laughs> Uh, Ian and Cathy, what uh, criminal behaviour is this? Oh, it's Levitt. I thought it was Lord Lucan. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Lennox Lewis and Faith Adam Faith. After he got done, well, he didn't get done because he got 180 hours community service or something for doing mm. whatever it was he did. Um, <laughs> or didn't do. Or didn't do, or didn't yeah. Do, yes. And these two, I mean, I don't know what, whether they were involved with it, with the actual fraud or whatever, but I do know that they were at his uh, son's birthday party that he had <laughs> uh, the other day and uh, they all went had a jolly good piss up because he wasn't in the nick, basically. I don't know whether that is what you've got written down. <laughs> The 
It is, uh, it is almost verbatim, yes. Um, could you be a little less specific? Uh, 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 Levitt only got done on one charge. I think we'd all be better be very careful what we allege about Mr. Levitt. And anyone who says he's a total fraudster would be wrong. <laughs> right, because he only that. got done on one charge. He misled hmm. Fimbra. Fimbra is a type of washing powder, isn't it? You advertise it. Yeah, I'm sure he it. just did again. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is the remarkably light sentence given to the only partial fraudster then, uh, Roger Levitt, of 180... Fraudulent trading. Thank you. It's not the same thing as fraud. <laughs> no. <laughs> of, uh, of 180 hours community service work for mishandling uh, 34 million pounds of his client's money. Levitt, one of whose clients was Michael Winner, was also banned from being a director for seven years. I think they got the wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul Martin, the end of a disgusting episode for you. Oh, this is the uh, wonderful Mary Whitehouse. That's her relaxing. <laughs> That's her going into a building. That's somebody trying to shoot her. <laughs> That's the police letting the assassin have another go. You're not a fan then, Paul? Yes. <laughs> yes, you're not a fan? Yes, I'm not a fan. <laughs> oh. No, I am. <laughs> are, you, are you a bit of a fan of Mary Whitehouse, isn't I am indeed. Why? I think her show, The Mary Whitehouse Experience, is very <laughs> amusing. Uh, it's, uh, it's the news that Mary Whitehouse is to step down after 30 years as a TV watchdog. Various broadcasters have spoken in support of her, including Melvin Bragg, writer of the sexually explicit Time to Dance, who said that he saw her as a mother figure, although he could so easily have been misheard. <laughs> Critics have accused her of being obsessed with bad language, saying her real concern should be violence. She said that was bollocks and she'd not been there. <laughs> Which, a disgraceful exhibition, brings us to the end of this opening sally. And the uh, shock news is that, as ever, both teams seem incapable of error. Ian and Cathy and Paul and Martin boasting an unblemished four. Before we sink to the grimy depths of round two, let's surface briefly for a quick squint at our caption competition, two everyday images. Ian and Cathy, yours comes first. <laughs> Paul and Martin, yours next. <laughs> and so, to the unfathomable slime of round two, four squalid tabloid headlines to unravel. Paul, tube train, drama. Oh yeah, this is, uh, uh, Ian McKellen was uh, appearing in Hamlet at the National Theatre and he got <laughs> ill and he said, I can't go on. And uh, somebody said, uh, oh, my dad's a tube driver. I'll see if I can borrow a train that'll come on instead of you. <laughs> so the train came on, they put a pair of tights on it. And they had an actor in the wing saying the lines and they synchronised the train doors with the words. <laughs> to be or not to be. Mind the gap. Yes, it's, uh, it's uncanny. It's almost entirely um, inaccurate. <laughs> Um, is this the runaway tube train in a drama that sort of went to a station and the driver got off to, I don't know, get a bus or something? <laughs> and, uh, and the train set off and there was loads, loads of people screaming, one of which was Ian McKellen. <laughs> it is the uh, driverless tube train which uh, ran out of control for two stops on London's Piccadilly line. Passengers sensed something was wrong when the train sped straight to the next station <laughs> without stopping inexplicably for half an hour in the tunnel. <laughs> Uh, Martin, some homely advice for you. Beware the tea cosy. Ah, well, this is a giant 30-foot marauding tea cosy yeah. that uh, got into the London Underground and closed the whole system down. Is that the one? Uh, did Paul tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's one of these marvellous government things where they say to you, if you're lucky enough to be a civil servant, they say to you, here's a couple of hundred thousand pounds. Go away and study the effect of tea cosies in the environment. In this case, it was a DTI report. And they discovered that one person, on our injuries in the home, that one person had actually been seriously damaged by a tea cosy. <laughs> you get on the wrong side of me, they're lethal. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they intriguing, they didn't they tell us the how. Tea cosy? They, they, I, well, I, I don't know. They haven't told us how. You see, we're left in a state of suspense. As we are with the fact that there were 3,000 people injured in bed. They don't tell us what they were doing. <laughs> 300 people injured with toilet seats. I mean, <laughs> it makes your eyes water, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. It depends what you do. Put the tea cosy over it. I would. 
Um, yes, it is. Along with tea cozies, thousands of household accidents have been caused by dressing gowns, slippers, bread bins, false teeth and placemats. Uh, Esther Ranson is now calling for tea cozies to be fitted with safety catches and child locks <laughs> and to be made of something less dangerous than wool. Uh, the report said one middle-aged woman dislocated her thumb trying to put on underwear. But it, but it failed to mention... There it, she uh, is! <laughs> <laughs> so what it failed to mention was that she was trying to put them on the dog at the time. <laughs> uh, Cathy, on your marks. Mm -hmm. Cuban set games record. Oh yeah, this was during the uh, Central American Games and uh, a bunch of blokes wanted to set a record for getting more than three men in a boat and they got 39 of them <laughs> in a boat and... Uh, pissed off because they didn't, <laughs> can't use that again. It's what they did though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, mm. yeah. And uh, they defected. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. It is the uh, defection of a record 34 <laughs> Cuban athletes in seven days from the Central American Games, where uh, even the team's security man has gone missing. <laughs> he was uh, hired from the well-known Cuban firm Grupo Cuatro. <laughs> uh, Ian. At ease, you horrible lot. This is about the army. You see this one? No, I didn't, no. no. <laughs> the army's having a back to basics campaign. They're going uh, back to bows and arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Large stones. <laughs> <laughs> it's army people are meant to stop um, going abroad and um, having sex and getting drunk all day and beating each other up and squaddies are meant to stop. Um, blue tacking each other's genitals together or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> These initiation ceremonies that the, um, the regiments are so fond of. And um, it's got to stop. When you say in blue the tacking their genitals together, <laughs> is that one soldier's genitals to another soldier's genitals? <laughs> or what? It's, um, it entirely depends on the regiment. <laughs> it's very different in the Paris. Oh, I wouldn't like to get it in the pack. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, the new code of conduct. Uh, I think the parade ground would be a mess if their genitals were blue tacky. <laughs> you say about turn, I mean, what's going to happen? <laughs> it's a battle of the fittest. <laughs> um, sorry, where was I? Um, it is the new code of conduct uh, issued by the Ministry of Defence aimed at ridding the army of boozers, sex maniacs and sadistic bullies or officers as they're known in the force. <laughs> Uh, in a clampdown on discipline, the directive says any individual who by dishonest behaviour shows he cannot be trusted to tell the <laughs> truth has no place in the military. Bit of a dilemma when your commander-in-chief is John Major. <laughs> Which uh, idle conjecture brings us stuttering to the end of round two. And the immediate joy is that both teams are unshakably level with Ian and Cathy and Paul and Martin locking antlers on eight. or locking genitals. <laughs> <laughs> You're intrigued by that, I am, you? yeah. And so, with uh, rounds one and two literally under our belt, and round four up and doing it literally under our belt, I mean... <laughs> uh, conditions could not be more perfect for round three now. Our torturous odd one out round for gentle giants. Which one's the John Fashion? Uh, Paul, for visions of gorgeousness for you. Princess Diana. Mm -hmm. Camilla Parker Bowles. May West and Francis Rossi <laughs> from Status Quo. Something wrong with his mirror. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's bought a black and white one, he's mean. <laughs> Could have gone for the Technicolor one. Yeah. Um, well, this is something to do with mugs, isn't it? Um, because uh, Francis Rossi of Status Quo has just had a sort of souvenir sort of mug. Of, Status quo has been produced, and Camilla Parker Bowles has been a sort of China doll that's called Camilla, that's sort of meant to be based on her or something. So it's either one of these, either Mae West or Princess Di, the odd one out. But I don't. Oh, what do you mean? I reckon Princess Di is the odd one out. But I mean, you thought she'd have well, had something done. But you must have had a mug. We met when she got uh, married yeah. and divorced. Should we just play like some that? incidental music? Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> you can do what you like. Mae <laughs> <laughs> um, West had a life jacket. I don't actually need you here. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's. Um, May West is the odd one out. Is the wrong answer. Ah. Uh, but you can have one for... We uh, thought it was... it was die. 
<laughs> well, because yes. we just said it was one or the other, that's mm, why. That's well, why. Martin, that's my answer. What would your one be? Mine would have been Princess Di. Really? Yeah. Yes, well, I'll, I'll go with that. you, then. All right. <laughs> Princess Di. Here's also the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> the um, answer's obviously... C Camilla. Camilla Parker Bowles. Why? For what, for what reason? Um, the odd one out front is She's Rossi. a statuette, yeah. not a mug. The yeah. others are all Toby Jones. That's right. Um, he, uh, what do you mean that? <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, that's I'm taking over. <laughs> uh, it's oh. that all of them have been uh, featured on Royal Dalton crockery, with the exception, of course, of Camilla Parker Bowles. In the past, Royal Dalton have featured Mae West, the woman who first delivered those immortal lines. Is that a gun in your pocket or is it just your penis? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and status quo have not only been featured on Royal Dalton Crockery, oh but have recently been complimented at one of their concerts by Her Majesty the Queen, who said, you're really quite good, aren't you? <laughs> so don't be surprised if she records this year's Christmas message in a satin bomber jacket with rocking all over the world on the back. <laughs> uh, Martin, four folk heroes for you. John Major. Mm, lovely. Yeah, nice. Talk to do little. Ooh. Ooh. Percy Edwards. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And Norman Lamont. Now, the most intriguing thing here, Shirley, is why is Dr. Doolittle standing behind that strange animal? Uh, I think maybe that's the government spokesman giving both views of the IRA talks. They happened, they didn't happen. They happened, they didn't happen. Maybe they happened, maybe they didn't. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Dr. Doolittle is next door to Mr. Doolittle on the top there. Um, Percy Edwards used to talk like animals. It's something to do with talking to animals. Dr. Doolittle talked to animals. Yeah. Percy Edwards was an animal. Um, so, do you want to pick one out? Well, it's well why? Uh, that's the, uh, yeah, why, should, why, can't we just, why can't they just all be friends? <laughs> why do we have to isolate people like this? Um, you unfortunately have to pick one of these. Well, we would, the well that's what Martin said, really. It's either going to be Major yeah. or Lamont, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So which mm. one would you go for? <laughs> well, that's how you <laughs> land in it, is it? Mr Major, I think, so. Oh, well, it might be Norman Lamont, you It see. could be Norman yeah. Lamont, though, couldn't yeah, it? it could be Norman Lamont is the odd one out. Should listen to Martin. It was actually John Major. Well, yeah, I think you, were... John Major. That was it. I said John Major. He did first. say John Major. I said John Major. First, ages ago. Yes, but you're overruled by your captain, unfortunately. Overruled? Since when have I had the power to overrule anyone? Anyway? <laughs> oh, I overrule you then. <laughs> Go on, piss off out. Go on, you overrule. <laughs> <laughs> Could you get Noel Edmonds doing this? <laughs> Um, it is that they're all capable of impersonating animals except John Major, who's nevertheless uh, described this week as a beast in bed on account of his thin lips. Uh, expert <laughs> physiognomist uh, Leyland Young explained, the thinner the lips are, the more enthusiastic the lover. What about <laughs> snakes? <laughs> what about them? Well, are they enthusiastic lovers? They haven't got any lips. Yeah. How should he know? Oh, I don't know. No one Does Norman knows. Lamont specialise in badger impressions? <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't, actually. Doesn't uh, Norman Lamont actually is a keen ornithologist and, a, and can apparently impersonate owls. <laughs> uh, Cathy, four heavenly bodies for you. David Meller. Mm. <laughs> Peter Brook. The singing nun. <laughs> and Millie Vanilli. Who are Millie Vanilli? They're a... Well, they were sort of a pop band, but they weren't because they weren't actually singing the songs, allegedly, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. No, they weren't singing the songs. They weren't singing the songs, they weren't singing the song yeah, band, they, as I said. And, uh, is, is it to do with singing, all this? It is to do with singing, Because she, she, she was a nun, and then she sang a song, and <laughs> <laughs> them two sang a song which they didn't sing, and then they weren't allowed to sing anymore, which they couldn't do anyway. <laughs> And David Mellor hasn't done any singing that I know of, but he... Um, Keen I've... patron of young actresses, though. Yeah, very much so. I've written to him. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Did he write back? No, he didn't, which was a shame, really. But mm. I just wanted to get pregnant by him so I could claim the 28 quid. <laughs> I don't yes. think he's the odd one out. All right. I think uh, <laughs> I think Millie Vanilli are the odd ones out. There's two of them. <laughs>
a Millie Vanilli are the old ones out, and uh, it is about singing, so I think I'll give you two points Yeah, for that. they all yeah. sing. Mella sang on National Music Day, didn't he? So something from Oliver, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll do, do anything for you, tones. just anything. That one. I'll do it all together. I'll do <laughs> anything for you. That one. <laughs> all together. <laughs> I'm trying to turn Welcome. the nature of this program into something more entertaining. <laughs> all people want is a sing song. <laughs> they don't want this rubbish. <laughs> Um, it is that they've all sung on TV except for pop group Millie Vanilli, who were famously exposed as having mimed uh, to other people's music. The Reverend Ian Paisley called on Peter Brook to resign for singing Clementine on an Irish TV show. He said, how can we have confidence in a man who sits on TV and sings while we're in agony? <laughs> That's a question that should have been put to Des O'Connor many years ago. <laughs> Uh, David Meller sang on television, I'd do anything, and thereby shot himself in the foot, narrowly missing Antonio de Sanchez's head. <laughs> and, uh, and joyfully, here is that golden moment once again. Would you lay my shoes? Anything. Paint your face bright blue. Anything. Catch a kangaroo. <laughs> and back again. <laughs> Look out for the 12 inch. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, in this round, Ian, a uh, rogues gallery for you John Gummer, yep. Michael Portillo, John Redwood, and Peter Lilly. Gosh, what a gorgeous bunch. <laughs> this is the current Tory cabinet. Well, a lot of them. Nearly. I think this is um, to do with bad language in descriptions of people because the three um, right-wingers, Portillo, Lilly and Redwood, um, were all described by John Major as bastards. Um, one of the few things he's got right. <laughs> because they were being disloyal and having lunch with Maggie and voting the wrong way on Europe. And uh, John Gumber wasn't one of the bastards. Um, but he was described by the Norwegian ambassador as a dritsek, which means a shit bag. <laughs> One of the few things he got right then. Yes, I mean, good old Norway. <laughs> Dis point there. <laughs> so that's it. Gummer, Gummer um, is a shit bag, and the others are bastards. <laughs> Which insulting behaviour brings us cursing to the end of this particular odd one and uh, the slightly s exciting situation is that Paul and Martin are down in the dumps with 10 while uh, Ian and Cathy are up on cloud 9 with 13. <laughs> and so it is that we find ourselves at last face to face with the grim charms of our final missing words round. Two batches of inconclusive pronouncements. What do they lack? As usual, a guest publication acts as our loose cannon. This week, the highly esteemed heating and ventilation news. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, Paul and Martin, you're in every way last at the moment, so uh, stand by. Levitt, my judge was what? Was my dad. <laughs> a, a beauty a or something. A, a, little, a little darling. My love child. Um, Off his head. You're uh, scared. Quite right. Curting round it at the moment Quite right. is Correct. not the answer. A marvel, I'll give you one for well, a little true. darling. <laughs> Next, all pensioners get what? Shat on. <laughs> or maybe alternatively extra money. Um, is it heating and ventilating news? <laughs> <laughs> I find they can tear it up and burn it. <laughs> Not they as get uh, VAT on it that way. Uh, more money. Uh, more money, I'll give you uh, two for extra payment is actually what we're after. Problems uh, with the launch of what? Uh, new gas fire. <laughs> Space um, shuttle. Central heating system. <laughs> Ventilator <laughs> switch. I'll give you two for, uh, for getting ventilator. Acoustic ventilator is what we're <laughs> really wanting. <laughs> and lastly, ITV giants agree to what? Merge make each other obscene amounts of money. To go on producing absolute rubbish. Satirical, but not funny. Um, <laughs> merge. 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 Merge was merge. actually uh, the answer that Paul gave us about half an hour ago. Very good. Uh, Ian and Cathy, your bunch of nonsense begins with what is the ultimate? Shagging. <laughs> is it gas-fired central heating? Uh, Coal-fired. <laughs>
fan fluid fan fluid boiler <laughs> is what we're after, which uh, an, is a new range of gas fire boilers. So uh, absolutely right. You, <laughs> how do you know so much about? I don't know. I'm doing better on this than the other stuff. <laughs> He's got a subscription. I think he has. Uh, news. Uh, next, Branson's voted the what? The biggest user of gas. Um, <laughs> Virgin of the year. <laughs> Ideal boss. Quite the right answer. Well done. Uh, answer, no, no, answer, question. Uh, <laughs> Clark takes whip to what? Cream. De deficit. <laughs> Public spending. Public spending is the correct but uh, unamusing answer. And finally, <laughs> engineers find what? Stop the tube. Train. <laughs> Loose um, wire, wire. Engineers find 20,000 people in tunnels, Stop. <laughs> no. Snow, wrong type of cable. snow. No, wire. I have actually given you the Chewing answer. Gum. It's engineers find what? Stop the chew. Oh. <laughs> Which is, uh, just irritating. <laughs> that's, uh, that's why I did it. Which uh, aimless meanderings bring us to the end of this evening's uh, carnage and the painful news for them is that uh, this week's hang dogs are Ian and Cathy with 17 and this week's Cheshire cats are Paul and Martin with 19. <laughs> So a trip to Texas for our winners, a trip to Texas home care for our winners. <laughs> but uh, before that can take place, it's time to resurrect the spectre of our caption competition. Ian and Cathy, I believe this was yours. Mm. Public still ignoring keep off the grass signs. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the uh, drinking baby bio can cause side effects? <laughs> Eating uh, grass is really great, says fat man in blue shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Martin, what do you think of this? Oh, uh, Graham Taylor's resigned. <laughs> Watch out for that cabbage, mate. Oh, too late. <laughs> um, date rape on the increase amongst... <laughs> That's what happens if you eat grass. And then you drink a lot of water, it just goes... Whoa. It's called cabbage mouth. Cabbage man dies in fight with Spider-Man. <laughs> On which, um, on which reflective note... Blimey, that's a big cabbage! <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are no longer captions, really, are they? No. no. They're just what well, I'm trying to turn time. the programme round. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and thank you. Do you want to cut to the song? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> when it's spring <laughs> again... <laughs> On which uh, trivial note we say thank you Why to our you guests. Why did you sing this last bit? <laughs> Put a little drum beat. Uh, they, uh, I don't think you'd like it. No. Uh, thank you anyway to our guests Ian Hisloff and Kathy Burke, Paul Merton and Martin Young. And I leave you with new photographs that reveal exactly why the Germans supported the franc and not the pound in last year's financial crisis. <laughs> After claims that new evidence has been found concerning the Birmingham Six, West Midlands police invite them back in for a chat. <laughs> and finally, there's uproar as the security services raid Margaret Thatcher's fridge. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>